I was wondering if you had any thoughts on the industry's job of communicating the benefits of nuclear power to the public. I think it's not only a lack of communication, I think to put a more modern spin on it, I think it's lousy marketing. These things have to be sold to the public and they are faced with two very <laughs> large hurdles. One, the historical fear that comes along with the Cold War, et cetera, et cetera. And then, and not to be uh, um, negative or pejorative, but the ignorance of the bulk of the public as to the benefits of nuclear. Um, it's carbon emission free. It is years and years and years and years and years of incredibly safe track records. Safer in terms of death than, than windmills. And so I think it's just a really lousy marketing job. You know, where do you see commercials on United States television that promote nuclear in a positive way and address the specific concerns that the public has? You don't. Well, you, you're aware of uh, some more recent uh, ideas about communication where if you tell people something is not true, they're even less likely to believe it if they already didn't believe it, right? Like, you can't Agreed. tell people climate change is a fact because uh, it'll just, somehow it comes across as in a way that reinforces their doubt. Polemic. Yeah, I mean, it's polemics. It's a, and, and so, <sighs> colleagues in the, in the communities in, w in which I exist, um, you know, the nuclear and chemistry communities, are constantly doing a heroic job of trying to to attack exactly what you're describing, Gordon. You have to go house by house, person by person, and try and explain in an unbiased fashion. And without the, the polemics that are, that are involved and the polarizing issues that are involved in order to convince people, I see no other way of doing it. I see no other way of doing it. That combined with very effective marketing, um, it's an extremely difficult issue. And it, and it is yet nevertheless, one could argue easily an unbelievable solution to all of the climate change issues that we have. I'm not, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican. I'm a scientist and I know what the carbon levels are. It's that simple. We need to fix it. We need to fix ocean acidification. We need to fix CO2 because there is an equilibrium between CO2 and carbonic acid, which is what happens when the CO2 gets dissolved into the water and we've got to fix it. What should the industry be doing that they're not doing now? Or what are they doing poorly? Marketing, marketing, marketing. Um, remove barriers to entry for small modular reactors. Um, I can tell you right now that there is a lot of pushback from uh, both federal entities as well as the industry itself. Those entities who make incredibly large you know, conventional reactors. There's a lot of pushback. And there's pushback because They've had barriers to entry set in place for many, many, many years. And they like it that way, <laughs> you know? So if you make the economic argument, which is actually what I'm gonna do today, I'm not gonna talk very much at all about chemistry. I'm gonna make a, a very, what I think is a very coherent business argument about taking on and implementing SMRs and, and molten salt reactors in particular because you can make a lot of money for shareholders, because you can create thousands and thousands of jobs, not just low, low wage earners, but incredibly high tech jobs, engineering, chemistry, physics, nuclear engineering. So, I mean, we, we need a big marketing push, but you know, there are a lot of forces, you know, against that. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Well, what do you think about efforts of, um, I, my, my story about uh, uh, Helen Caldicott is this, yes. is that is it actually Im impossible to update the Wikipedia page to uh, factually represent sort of the um, criticisms leveled against her because uh, it needs to be reported by a credible source, not a blogger. So that means the media has to cover it. And the media, uh, as far as I can tell, they don't have any reason to cover it if the industry is not bringing these issues up. Correct, correct. And, and I think that that actually presents a very effective buffer. Uh, the complete distortion of, of facts, the complete bias of, of Helen Haldicott, uh, um, you know, against anything nuclear, just... Well, how can the industry keep going on where um, a number of people are making false claims and they're not getting challenged? Like Josh Fox, uh, I'm not saying he's making false claims, but look at what the gas industry 
did with Josh Fox. Like they've got a website dedicated to uh, trying they're painting him in as negative a light as possible. What what's with the nuclear industry that they don't do that? They don't care. They don't have to. Big nuclear is going to survive, and as a matter of fact, it's going to flourish. Look at what Westinghouse is doing in China. They have, to my knowledge, four AP1000s being built right now. Another 12 on order. So they're making plenty of money for their shareholders. They couldn't care less about the United States. They're going to develop it outside the United States, and they're going to move in, you know, with a fully developed AP1000, for example, and drop it into, you know, onto United States soil. And, and you know, other than rather extreme states like California, they're going to continue to make money. But I, th I would say that there is a seismic shift toward profits and revenues that are going to go, that are going to occur outside the United States and not here. And so they don't care about Helen Haldicott. They don't care. We do. We do because we're trying to grow the industry in a different way, create our own niche, right? Where you can't drop in an AP 1000 that's a thousand, you know, that's a gigawatt or 1.4 gigawatt. We like small, you know, 50 megawatt, megawatt thermal, 300 megawatt thermal, 600 megawatt thermal is the biggest one that, that we, you know, that we're talking about. So I actually have to go. Our talk is very soon.